What's up? Today, I'm gonna to be showing you what I carry around in my civil structural engineering backpack that I use on a daily basis. To start things off, this is the backpack I use. Links in the description to all of these things that I have below. This is the Peak Design 30 liter backpack. I love this bag. This is technically a camera bag that has all of these unnecessary bells and whistles and it, that makes it really expensive. It opens from the top. It also opens from the sides, uh, both sides and What's cool about it is that it's modular. You can readjust the slots in there so you can carry uh, all of your accessories for your camera or even random electronics and books that I particularly use on a daily basis. It also has a sleeve for your laptop and a tablet and to carry some of your accessories as well. And it has really cool magnets. It has magnets everywhere so they can be in place. It just feels really good and it's waterproof. And I mentioned that this was a really expensive backpack, really not really necessary, but hey, it was a work anniversary gift from my firm and this was the most expensive backpack that I could find and they stitched their logo on it. But I know it's at least a couple hundred bucks so I'm really glad I have this. Next up is my work laptop. This is getting old. This is definitely a couple years old. It's a Dell XPS a really old version. I want to get a new laptop, but it does great with all of the 3D analysis programs and 3D design software that I use for designing buildings. I also bring with me my Microsoft Surface tablet. This is kind of my light duty laptop. If I'm out in the field, I'll use it to look at drawings or blueprints of the buildings that I'm looking at. I can also turn it into a tablet with a laptop for light things like uh, casual web browsing or to check emails and my agendas. This is the older version, but uh, I'll link the newer versions in the description below. Oh, and next up is one of my favorite productivity devices. So I use this mouse at work and at my home office because it's a, it's a wireless MMO gaming mouse. I like to call it a productivity mouse because it has 12 buttons that you can program and use all of your shortcuts on. This is the Venus Pro wireless mouse. It's kind of a, a lesser known brand, but uh, it works fine for me. And I know there's a lot of different type of uh, MMO mouses like this that you can find elsewhere as well. If you haven't tried one, go try one. It makes my life a lot easier than having to press all of those control shift command shortcuts. And it just takes a week to get used to all these buttons, but saves you a lot of time. I use it a lot on my Microsoft Surface 2 because it has this USB thing that can really Really easy to take with you on the go and I rarely have to charge this thing I don't charge it for days on end as long as I keep the RGB lights off next up are my airpod pros I like these things because I like to go on walks and listen to music or some podcasts or whatnot I just love how they're wireless I like wireless things I want everything wireless now. I just keep them in my pocket at times and they're really easy to carry around. Next up is my iPhone 12. I used to have an Android on my last phone, but uh, I really like the interface and the use of the iPhone. So I'm a big fan of those. I'm not a fanboy on all these Apple products. I kind of just use them and if it does the job well, I'll use it. I don't really have loyalty to uh, any of these brands. I mainly use my iPhone for obvious things like phone calls, text messages, emails, but it's also one of my primary learning tools. I love learning new things through this, like listening to audiobooks, podcasts, watching educational videos, and using my favorite interactive STEM learning platform, Brilliant, who I'd like to thank for sponsoring today's video. You know, I'm a big proponent of learn by doing, and that's what makes Brilliant's methodology so effective. They have an ever-growing catalog of courses in math, science, and computer science that help you learn the concepts by working through them yourself in a visual, hands-on way. For example, in Brilliant's Algorithms Fundamentals course, they can help you learn how to program without having to dig through the weeds of the coding syntax through these fun interactive challenges. You just shift around these blocks of pseudocode, and then you can get immediate feedback on your results. 
it's a good way to understand how computer algorithms work. And then once you have that down, the coding syntax becomes a lot less intimidating. To get started for free, visit brilliant.org slash Picardle or click on the link in the description below. And the first 200 people will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. And the next device is uh, one of the newer ones that I've gotten that's also one of my favorite ones. This is the Microsoft Surface Headphones 2. I got these because there's sometimes a lot of noise in the office when there's a lot of people talking. Sometimes it's hard to hear yourself or hear whoever you're talking to. You know, with everyone being on video calls nowadays, these headphones not only look cool, but they're noise canceling and they're really easy to control. You just turn the knobs to turn down the volume or turn up the volume, or you can even control how much sound it cancels out. It also comes with a mic. I don't know where it is, but it's there. People hear me on voice calls and they last forever, the battery life. I used to have some peasant $10 headphones and they were just so uncomfortable and they died after every phone call. I always had to charge those. But with this, they just last all day. It even tells you the battery life whenever you turn them on and it's saying like 18 hours. I haven't tried that, but I know I've been on phone calls almost all day and the battery life is still good after that. Another office related thing that I carry with me in my backpack is this Logitech uh, webcam. I mainly carry it around because uh, my current laptop, the camera positioning is way down at the screen and the camera sucks. I look embarrassing whenever I'm on an important web call. I'm always looking down like this and everyone can see my double chins. But with this webcam, I just put it on top of my laptop screen and I look a lot more normal and happier because I'm keeping my chins up. Let's go through some of my miscellaneous random engineering stuff that I have. I have my TI-36X Pro calculator. I have multiple of these. I just keep them everywhere because some of them are really old and they ran out of batteries. And I love how it can store multiple lines of data and it can do fractions really well as well. I'm studying again for my engineering licensing exams. So I have a bunch of different colored pens and highlighters that I just carry around with me and tabbies as well. I use all those to uh, make notes of all the things that I'm studying and have a fairly complex highlighting system that I like to use. I like using different colors for, for everything. I got graph paper for doing random sketches or taking down random notes. And I carry a bunch of masks around because you never know when you need them or sometimes you just need them everywhere you go. And next up is my camera that I'm shooting with right here. I use a Canon R6 with a 15 to 35 millimeter lens. I don't take it with me all the time, but I do have room in my camera bag. So if I'm going out in the field to take photos of something or if I'm gonna shoot some random footage, I'll take this with me as well. Last but not least is my Nintendo Switch. This is my anti-boredom device. If I get too stressed out, I'll just turn this on and uh, waste a couple minutes uh, playing Pokemon or some other games I got. Unfortunately, this, or fortunately, is one of my most used devices in my bag. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed the video and make sure to check out these other videos that I've made about civil structural engineering. I'll see you next time.